Listeners beware, you're in for a scare. This episode, Lucy Jones in Deep in the Jungle of Doom. I'm Troy J. Malcolm, and this is Pick a Path Podcast, and I'm joined by Lucy Jones. Hello! Question. Are you going to do that intro voice the entire time? Please, 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 please. You want me to just hold that intro voice all the time yeah. when I'm reading? Great. And like, just, you know, in regular life. In regular life. <laughs> I can definitely give it a go. Oh, please. Lucy Jones is a producer. <laughs> They were an executive producer on From Top to Bottom, a queer comedy detective mystery film. They're also the executive producer of their own podcast, Season Quest. Adding my own echoes, because I'm not sure if we'll add them in post. I mean, I wouldn't. You've you've got it down pat. Oh, thank you. (laughs) So Lucy and I are also on a Dungeons & Dragons podcast together with two of our other friends. Uh, Charlie, who was in last season, and Tom, who's going to be coming up later this season. So exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got our own Dungeons & Dragons podcast, Season Quest. You can find it in places. And I'll do an actual ad of it at the end. <laughs> Excellent. That's what I need, an ad bit for it. A teaser for the ad. <laughs> exactly. Uh, trailers. An ad ad. Ad ad is great. I love ad ads. <laughs> so you're going to be joining me today for the Season 2 first episode. Premiere. Premiere of Season 2, Deep in the Jungle of Doom, which is the 11th Give Yourself Goosebumps novel by R.L. Stein. I'm actually going to hand it over to you so you can have a look and talk about the cover quickly. Okay, first off, I just need you to know I love it. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> it's got a terrifying um, fish person, and I'm pretty sure this is the guy from Shape of Water. Ah, uh, yes. If you remember the fish from Shape of Water, um, I think it's his brother. <laughs> he's a he's purple instead this time, and also far more malicious seeming. <laughs> he does seem spooky. Um, choose from over 20 different scary endings. Love that. And you'll get to experience two of those today. We'll give you two lives so you can experience two of those endings meaning that people at home still have over 18 endings that they can experience if they buy the book themselves. I love that question. Do you mean three of them because two lives and then up oh, two? No, you get two Ooh. chances. Oh, okay. No, I understand now. I thought it was like... No, unfortunately not. I was really hoping I'd get one more shot as a ghost. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. The ghost life. Oh my goodness. Join the all-new Goosebumps fan club. Details inside. Please? <laughs> Well, look, if you get a good (laughs) ending, we might let you join the Goosebumps fan club. Yes. (laughs) Are you going to be really mad at me if I live on my first try? If you, like, survive all the way? If I survive. I would be very impressed. I would really, I really want that. I've done a full season now, and I've had one person who I consider having succeeded in their book and getting a good ending. If you've listened to every episode of Pick a Path podcast, you'll know who I'm talking about. I have in the fir- like in the time of recording this, the first episode came out today, and I haven't listened to it. Shh. <laughs> we don't want people to know we film these in advance, even if in episode one we do say 2019. Tell me, is, tell me if you lived. Uh, Molly Mason managed yeah. to survive <laughs> her entire book. I'm proud. She did. She died within the first like 30 minutes, but then she survived for another hour and 10 minutes to. <laughs> get like the correct ending where she completes every part of like the story that had been set up for her mm-hmm. she did really well very proud of her it's yeah i should have what i really should have done is like hacked your laptop taken those files listened back and then like used that information yeah to yeah. like come up with my own strategy <laughs> but i didn't and i could have done, done something far more easy which was google it ah, yes. also didn't Yep. I mean, you've known which book you were going to be playing through for a while now. Mm. <laughs> and I believe you said that you do actually know Deep in the Jungle of the Doom. Deep, I... the... <laughs> Deep in the Jungle of Doom. Deep in the Jungle of Doom. You do know it vaguely? No of it. Yeah, I went, a, I went on a holiday with my friends. And because we're very cool, instead of like <laughs> doing drugs and drinking, um, <laughs> my friend did a dramatic reading of the beginning of this book. So I haven't made it to any of the choices. Amazing. Which is a very dramatic reading. And I'm pretty sure it was this book. Can't be certain. Good. Um, I believe I believe we'll be on a school field trip. Yep. Well, we're you know, about to begin the book. I will read it to you as we go. So excited. Feel free to make your own sound effects. Feel free to interject <laughs> with conversation. Um, I will. <laughs> thank you. you I will give me? you the options as we come to them. All right, jungle explorers. <laughs> Man, you're with the voices quick. 
I didn't expect the first line to be dialogue, I'm sorry. I direct your attention to this magnificent specimen of bromeliad acmea. On and on, the guide Miss Weedle drones. You can't believe you're stuck on a nature study tour when you saw the brochure for the Junior Explorer Adventure Club at the front desk of your hotel. It looked great. Three days hiking in the jungle with 10 other kids your age and an experienced jungle guide. How cool. Come on, you begged your parents. We're in South America and you want me to sit by the pool all day? I could do that at home. Why did you take me to a foreign country if you don't want to expose me to new things? Question. Yeah. Does going on a hike and learning about the biology of that, that doesn't sound very exciting. <laughs> I it can't, doesn't. I can't place myself as like, an, I'm going to guess like an 11 year old kid being like, you know what I would love to do? Let's go on a hike. Let's go on a three day hike. <laughs> I mean, I guess it fits with 10 other kids, like getting away from your parents in a foreign country. It's, you just run away. <laughs> yeah. Come it's, on. You begged your parents. Nope, I've already read that line. <laughs> it's like, we need to, we need to reread it. We need content. Yeah. Now you wish your parents had said no. At least your best friend Zoe is with you on the hike. And even though the guide is as boring as possible, the jungle is pretty cool. Heavy vines hang crisscrossed over the trail. Strange and beautiful flowers and deep colours sprout from every side. As you follow behind Zoe, you notice a strange spiky flower with bright blue petals off to the side of the trail. Absent-mindedly, you reach out to touch it. A sudden breeze makes the bright blue petals shiver. No! The flower screams. You pull your hand back at the last second. Go on to page two. <laughs> so, is the instruction at the end of page one, go to page two? Sure is. What are you going to do, Lucy? <laughs> you know what? Akin to how I read most books, I'm gonna go to page two. That's amazing. I'm really proud of you. It's I did I not tell you? I can count. <laughs> no The scream continues. Don't touch that flower Except it's only Miss Weedle. What's so, wrong, you ask? Is it poisonous? Does it shoot venom or something cool? Of course not! Miss Weedle huffs. Miss <laughs> 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 Weedle huffs. <laughs> <laughs> the flower. That flower is an endangered species. You could have killed it. She turns and marches back to the front of the group. Phew, that was a close one. Zoe says, brushing <laughs> the bangs away you from her eyes. You gave her a gross voice. <laughs> Look, she's your friend. <laughs> <laughs> I don't be mean to Zoe. That's my girl. <laughs> For a second there, I thought something exciting was actually going to happen. <laughs> Zoe's cool. Way cool. <laughs> Man, she sounds it. <laughs> That's one of the reasons she's your best friend. She has a sarcastic remark for every situation, and she's not scared of anything. That's why you know she's just as anxious as you are to break away from the group and do some real exploring. I've ne I I don't know if I've heard like oh, I'm just I'm just so anxious about this being something you're really excited to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm just having a panic attack for this party. <laughs> I'm so, so nervous to, like, get away from everyone and <laughs> do my own thing. I'm just, I'm terrified for this situation I'm going to be in. This like, situation I'm so happy about. Fun. Just a moment ago, through the trees, you saw something else that was definitely worth checking out. There it is again. Off to the right, about 20 yards away. Incredible. Your heart skips a beat at what you see. Find out what it is on page 37. Oh, weird. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to page three this time. <laughs> Do you like that? No. Oh, no. I loved it. A little bit. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm so mad you picked that voice. Because it's so <laughs> upsetting. About 20 yards off to the right, through the crisscrossing branches and leaves of the jungle, you see a bush. A big bush of vines with feet. Oh that... my goodness, Dangle. Is that the name I'm thinking of? That's a it Pokemon. Is. Yeah. You got him. You know things. <laughs> oh no! That's right. Two clawed feet carved in stone are sticking out from under the clinging vines. You figure it could be one of those tribal ruins in the jungle you've read about. You heard there used to be some pretty dangerous tribes of headhunters in the area. You're dying to find out if they still exist. Headhunters shrink people's heads and they make sacrifices to ancient statues carved in stone. At least that's what you've heard. 
Mrs. Weedle would have everyone thinking the most dangerous thing in the jungle was a bee, or maybe an aphid. They eat endangered plants. Zoe, you call up to her. Look over there. There's something weird about that bush. I wish we could go check it out. I've got an idea, <laughs> Zoe says with a gleam in her eye. You've been friends with Zoe for almost your entire life, and you know that when you see that gleam in her eye, it means you're about to get into trouble. Usually a fun kind of trouble, but always big trouble. Find out what kind of trouble on page 64. <laughs> Thoughts on your friend Zoe? Um, she, I don't know if she's a bad bitch or not. I just can't <laughs> place her yet. It, I, it's the voice that throws you. It really does. It's, I'm just, I'm so excited to see her like carry on in her life and go on to Zoe 101. <laughs> Um, I'm, so, I'm so excited about that. This her. is just Zoe 100 at the moment. Yeah. 100. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Weedle. <laughs> Zoe calls out. Fuck. <laughs> I'm too good at that voice. I don't know. Like, I've never done this voice before. Is that... That came from deep inside. <laughs> this is, I think this is my real voice. Yeah. The group comes to a halt. What was the name of that extremely rare flower that you were describing this morning? The one that all the famous scientists are searching for? <laughs> Cannot. Which one? What was her <laughs> I don't, what was that? I don't know because I can't stop thinking about Zoe. She's gonna hold. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home to my flatmates and be like, guys, <laughs> I need you guys to talk. Just like consistently talk at me for the next eight hours so I can get this other voice out of my head. <laughs> Which one? You mean the Amaryllis Keratatolocus? I don't know why I chose a book with like Latin words in it because I've not read this book before. <laughs> I mean, you didn't choose it. It chose you. <laughs> it chose you. That's, yeah, it chose us both. It's, it's really what bonds us as friends. <laughs> Is that the one with the weird twisting orange petals and the blue stems? Zoe asks innocently. Yes, indeed, Mrs. Weedle answers. If this is a different voice for Mrs. Weedle, I apologise. This is her voice now. I'm not sorry. <laughs> she starts to wring her fingerlet. Fingerlets? <laughs> she starts to wring her fingers excitedly. What about the Kiratekalotus? Hey, fingers, I gotta, I gotta fuck off you. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it, Zoe nearly shouts. I really did. Where? Where? Mrs. Weedle does a happy little jump. <laughs> Man, great visual joke. Thank you. I think it was over there. Zoe says, pointing back down the path. Or maybe it was that way. She says, pointing to the left of the group. We should split up and search for it, you suggest. All the kids start talking at once. Now's your chance to sneak away. Quick, sneak over to 42. <laughs> As you can see, you're being given plenty of choices already. It's, yeah... It's just testing if I can read or not. And I say this, you're reading it to me. <laughs> this, imagine if an audiobook did this. Being like, and now I'm just going to switch over this. I don't know why I've done the phone calls and like, um, And yeah, now I'm going to jump from like this thing to this thing. I'm like, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> yep. It is it is the illusion of choice. It is. But you know, you need to be aware of what the situation is before you get really thrown into the conflict. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need real context before I can make choices in life. I'm kidding. I've never done that for anything ever. <laughs> I moved into a different city on a whim. <laughs> if we joke, I did it. You would do it if Zoe told you to. She's cool. Is <laughs> she a bad bitch? I've decided she's a bad bitch. You and Zoe dash off the path into the jungle. You hear Mrs. Weedle yelling behind you, Quiet! You can picture her, red-faced and out of breath. All the noise settles down and Mrs. Weedle starts talking again. You stay very still and listen from your hiding place behind a big tree. We've got two hours of hiking left to get back to our campground for the night. That gives us until three o'clock to find that Keratata locus. Now everyone, follow me! It worked. They're looking for that flower. And as long as you hook back up with them before three o'clock, they may never know you're gone. Zoe. Did you really see that Keratatloka whatever? No way, she says, <laughs> grinning from ear to ear. But now, we get to explore. <laughs> you know? I'm, at some point, I'm going to stop laughing at the voice. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to stop laughing at the voice. <laughs> 
You make your way through the dense leaves and vines before the stone feet that caught your eye before. Here it is, Zoe, you shout. There must be a statue underneath these vines. You both get a good grip on the creeping vines and yank them back. Your blood runs cold at what you see. Rush to 47. So have you ever travelled to South America or anywhere else interesting like that? I, yeah, I've done some travel. I've never um, had a friend called Zoe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not immersed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there goes the realism of the story. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also, I don't know, the idea of being a kid and going on a holiday with like your best friend, that kind of rules. It does. Like, I've, I've done like small trips with friends. Mm. But like, even then, like the only time... I've gone like on an actual holiday with the best friend is we had to plan ourselves we went without our parents and I was 17 so like and that was filled with the uh goosebumps books not drugs and alcohol or a different trip oh no different different trip uh because I'm very cool uh me and my friend went to a convention in Australia and also really uh, we went to um RTX in Australia and uh, we decided we'd go together the third time we'd ever talked to each other. Amazing! I know, because we're both very, again, on a whim. <laughs> the first time was her being like, oh, like, your screen background is this thing from this thing. I was like, oh, yo, nice. And then we had another conversation and another class bring like, oh, like, d- 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 you're big fan of this, da da da. So we talked to each other for maybe 90 seconds in total. And she's like, you going, you going to Australia this year for this convention? I was like, I am now. <laughs> good. Well, we love it when things work out. Oh, yeah. Still very good friends to this day. Good. Well, let's hope that you and Zoe remain good friends when you find out what's under these vines. I'm, I'm going to have to tell my friend I'm going to replace it with Zoe. That's true. Does I your think... friend have an interesting voice? <sighs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> What a dramatic sign. Right? Also, your friend <gasps> hears this and is just like, wow, Lucy thinks I've got a boring voice. <laughs> she knows. I say it to her face every day. Which is weird because we don't live in the same city. <laughs> <laughs> the creeping vines fall to either side of the statue. A hideous gargoyle carved out of gleaming white stone grins out at you. It has crazy bulging eyes and long, sharp teeth. It looks like some kind of mutant cat creature. It's really creepy, Zoe says. It gives me the shivers just looking at it. it what was... happened to her being fearless? Also, is it is Gargoyle a creature? Is it because it's on the corner of a building? Because I just don't... In, in my head, I was like, I feel like this jungle doesn't have skyscrapers. No, I thought Gargoyles were a type of creature. But I... then I guess it says mutant cat creature. I don't know. Maybe, maybe... I guess all maybe, of my... we're, maybe we're in a concrete jungle. <laughs> maybe this is set in where, New York. Where dreams are made of. Yeah. <laughs> It is. Check out Pick a Path Podcast, episode four, where we discuss <laughs> concrete jungles. No, I'm thinking season quest. That's what I meant. What did I say? <laughs> Pick a path. This one. I was like, whoa, you, this is someone else too. I wish. Jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, I wasn't around. <laughs> I'm not with you every day. <laughs> we look. <laughs> you realize my next character for season quest is going to use Zoe's voice. <laughs> It's not. It's not. I promise. I wouldn't let you. I would. I would kill your character off because I'm going to be DMing. Good. That really shows the timeline of this. Get ready for me to be a DM. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Why? What other word am I meant to say but yuck in You're this right. situation? You're right. Then you hear something else. It sounds like a low, deep growl. It sounds like it's coming from the statue. You feel a hot blast of stale-smelling air on your face. That's when you notice the bits and pieces of plaster falling away from the statue. What's going on, you think? You shake your head and blink your eyes, but it doesn't help. The great stone beast lifts one of its clawed forepaws and slices at some vines still clumped around it. They fall in pieces to the ground. Okay, love night at the museum. Run! (laughs) Zoe screams, grabbing at you. But which way? There are two paths leading away from where you are. Down the path on the left, you see a small pool and a waterfall. Maybe you could swim away from the beast. To the right, you see a clearing with heavy sticks and rocks. To fight the beast with sticks and stones, run to page 11. To try your luck with the water, rush to page 68. Um, well, here's my reasoning. Sticks and stones may break your bones. I don't think statues have bones. (laughs) I it's believe true. is how the rhyme goes. And if it's stone, I think it's going to sink in the water. So I'm going to go to the water. Because it's stone stone heavy. 
<laughs> so it'll, it'll sink to the bottom, and it's not going to drown, but it's going to be stuck. Stone doobie heavy. Yeah. That is how it be. Yeah. So we're going to rush over to page 68 to check out the water. So close, yet so far. And hey, you've been given an option now. It's so exciting. It's, what did it take? 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Cut hey. that out. We don't have... It, let, how long has it been? Four minutes? Lucy, That's how much I'm guessing is going to stay in. <laughs> Lucy, edit that out. <laughs> I'm not editing this. You no, I'm kidding. I'm going to edit this. <laughs> I have to make myself look great. Look sound great. Sound great. great. <laughs> okay. You race towards the waterfall. Maybe you can lose the giant gargoyle that way. The stone beast chasing you kind of looks like a cat, you think. And cats hate water, right? <laughs> That's another great bit of reasoning. <laughs> Down the path, a small pool of water is surrounded by lush tropical plants and flowers. From 50 feet above, a river cascades down into a pool, sending up a thick mist. Jump into the water! Zoe shouts. She does a perfect cannonball from the mossy bank. You glance around. The stone beast appears on the path behind you. Its hideous jaws snap wildly at the air. Its thick stone leg muscles are bunched up, ready to pounce. Things happened real quick. Like, yeah. this this statue just kind of came to life and was after you. Admittedly, I'm I'm kind of glad. Let's get into this. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, can I throw out what I think is about to happen? You can. We're turning I, to page 51, so I'll do that while you talk. I reckon I'm going to get it by an alligator. <laughs> or a crocodile. I couldn't tell you the difference. Wow. Tom got mad at me because I said I was scared of alligators and crocodiles. He's like, when are your adult life have you had to be afraid of these? And I was like, look, never. Does that stop me? No. <laughs> so, as mentioned earlier, we are recording Lucy's episode of this podcast on the day that we released the first episode of Pick a Path podcast. Ever. Which actually features an alligator or crocodile on the cover of the book. And there was a no lengthy way. discussion about whether it was an alligator or crocodile because one of them has a rounded snout. But Jules couldn't remember which was which. Yeah. So just I'm weird trying to, I'm doing. trying to think of what it would be. Hmm. I'm going to say... No, C for crocodile is rounder than an A for alligator. Those, those are quite arched and angled. That's unless it's a lowercase A. No, you're right. Um, I'm going to say alligator's got rounded, rounded schnage because I think it sounds rounder. It, it does sound rounder. Alligator. Like yeah, yeah. Ra crocodile. crocodile. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below if we're incorrect. <laughs> Can I tell you right now? Probably. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a guess. Probably. You stare into the crazy bulging eyes of the stone creature. It looks like a little Chinese parade dragon, you think. It's baring its teeth at you in a hideous grin. You've got to make your move. Since the beast is made of stone, it probably can't swim. Hey! There's only one catch. Neither can you. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> Desperately, you cast your eyes around. On the ground next to you, there's a big stick. You'll definitely need something if you're going to fight off that gargoyle. Then again, maybe the stick would help you float if you jumped into the water. You pick it up. The gargoyle swishes its tail angrily and licks its chops with its huge gravel-coated tongue. What's it going to be? Risk drowning or take your chances with the beast? Better make your move before it pounces. Are you going to fight the stone beast with the stick, or are you going to jump in the water with the stick? This is mean. It's give, it gave you the choice of jumping into the water, and now but it's you like... you can't swim? Yeah. It said at the beginning, like, oh, like, all I've been doing is, like, sitting beside the pool. I could do that at home. I assume he also has a pool at home, and yet he can't swim? That's why he sits next to it. Yeah, but, like, oh... Uh... He, he, it's you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't care. <laughs> um... Still, yes. like Sorry, I can't like, swim. I I cut my own hair because I watched people do it for long enough in my life that I could do it myself. Mm. I reckon I could do that with swimming. Um, well, even though I can swim, I reckon if I watch people swim for genuinely forty five minutes, I would know <laughs> enough. That's fair. So, do you think you're going to fight the stone beast with the stick, or are you going to jump in the water with the stick? This is all about the stick, really. It's really yeah. I mean, it's just, it's stone. It's not going to do anything if I hit it with a stick. That'd be like attacking the Washington Monument with a baseball bat. Nothing. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why that's... <laughs> I watched Hamilton the other day. Ah. <laughs> and so I've been thinking about it a lot. It's... I, no, I'm swimming. I'm swimming. I'm sticking with my game plan. Swim. Cool. We're heading over to page 78. Let's see if it pays off. 
This could be the shortest episode of Pick a Path ever. <laughs> it's a 14 minute episode. <laughs> Just as the Goyle. <laughs> the Goyle. Hey Goyle, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Just as the Gargoyle pounces at you, you do a clumsy backwards dive off the bank into the water. Why show off if you don't know how to swim? Why would you backwards dive? It's, you know, the drama of it all. You plunge down into the deep pool, gripping the heavy stick with both hands. It seems as if you're underwater for too long, but then your face and arms break the surface and you can breathe again. The stick floats. Thank goodness. You made it! Zoe cheers. Yeah, you cry in triumph. My other hope was if, like, I couldn't swim and it was really, like, the stick isn't helping. Someone's there who can swim. I assume Mm. Zoe can swim. Right, well, we she really this. quickly jumped into the water. Cannonball can't swim. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like can't and ball. I'm very funny. Yeah, that was pretty good. I do like a can't and ball into the water. <laughs> just, just jumping to a conversation I've having before the podcast. Uh, me and my flatmates are training up amiibos to fight each other in Smash. And I'm hoping to take Isabel. <laughs> Might make her name isn't Isabel. <laughs> Isn't a bell. Yeah. She's not. She's not. She's not. <laughs> you got him. <laughs> I'm not wrong. No. The water is icy cold. It's like taking a bath in an ice cube tray. Look! Zoe <laughs> says breathlessly. Sorry. Look! Look! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that. No! I didn't like any of it, let's <laughs> be realistic. Zoe says breathlessly. She points to the shore. The stone beast is prowling back and forth on the bank. It looks angry. It won't come near the water, Zoe declares. Yay! Excellent, you say, shivering. But what do we do now? If we stay in here much longer, I think I'll freeze to death. I'm already starting to lose feeling in my toes. Zoe doesn't say anything. Her teeth are chattering too hard. You feel your feet beginning to grow numb from the freezing water. Are you destined to become two human ice cubes? Or will you be torn apart by a big walking rock? Doggy paddle over to page six to find out if you have any hope. (laughs) Are you doing it? Are you doggy paddling? Oh, no. Also not having any hope. (laughs) No, I might as well doggy paddle. (laughs) Again, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting to make choices here. That's... You've made two choices in the last... No, I'm like, this is, this is one where I don't get to make a choice. I don't want to be filled with hope. You're right. They're going to take it away from me. Grrrr. The gargoyle growls at you from the shore and slashes. Oh, is that not Zoe? <laughs> <Gay>. <laughs> no, very different. The gargoyle growls at you from shore. And... Well, like a gurgle. Mm. I don't know. Didn't, just didn't like that. <laughs> Grrr. The gargoyle growls at you from shore and slashes one of its razor sharp claws through the air. It doesn't say the shore, it just says from shore. I guess. I'm not sure. No, you're, you're a friend of Zoe. <laughs> I'm, you're not the main character, you're friend of. <laughs> you're executive producer, Lucy Jones. That's <laughs> and sometimes a detective named Juicy Loans. Look, sometimes. Man, that would have been a minute ago from this recording. I'm, I'll, like... A minute ago. <laughs> over a year ago. Um, yuck. The wow. process of time. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're starting to lose feeling above your knees now. You never knew water could be this cold. Things are looking grim. Let's be calm about this, you say. There must be something you can t- we can do. Yeah, right. Zoe moans, rolling her eyes. Why don't we just swim right up the waterfall? Ha ha, very funny, you retort. Sometimes Zoe's sarcasm isn't so cool. Sometimes. But you stare at the waterfall anyway. The water pounds down from the jagged cliffs above. Sunlight turns the falling streams of water many sh- deep shades of blue and green. But that's not what you're looking at. There's something else. You think you can make out the outline of something behind the falls. Something big. Something dark. Is it another stone beast? Hurry to page 31 to find out. Gonna be the Batcave. (laughs) Is this just for how I become Batman? It might be. Again. desperately want it to be. You're not the first person to ask if this is how you become Batman during one of these books. (laughs) Ah, uh, best that she was doing Trapped in Batwing Hall. Ah, that makes a lot more sense <laughs> in the context of it. You, you, had a, you hoped it was a cave. I just really want to be Batman. <laughs> so bad. No, it's not another stone beast you see behind the waterfall. It's the mouth of a cave. Yes! Ah, yes, Cave Mouth, your favourite band. <laughs> Love Cave Mouth. We might not be able to go up the waterfall, you say to Zoe. 
but maybe we can go through it. Go Done. over it. Can't go, go under, under it. it. We, we can go, go through, through it. it. Come here and books. look. So what? <laughs> we should do. We should do audio books for kids' books. You're right. That'd be fun. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Clutching your floating stick, you pedal over towards the pounding falls and mist. Zoe follows you. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> Oh, Zoe shouts. There's a cave behind the falls. Maybe we can crawl through and find a way out of this mess. You take a deep breath and dive down, stick and all. Under the tremendous spray, under the tremendous spray created by the waterfall, the water pushes you down for a moment. Your eyes and ears fill with the pounding foam. When you come up again, you are behind the sheet of water in the mouth of the cave. The sunlight shines through the mist creating tiny rainbows in the air. It's pretty cool to look at the pool behind, through the waterfall. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to make it rhyme, it didn't. Cool and pulled it. <laughs> yeah, through the you waterfall. Know what? Love that for you. <laughs> the waterfall. The... Again, Katara. <laughs> Wait, that's before the podcast. <laughs> you. <laughs> Thinking you could swim. Mm. The cave behind you isn't nearly so pretty. Dark, jagged rocks cut out from its black mouth. A warm, moist wind blows through against your face. Yuck. <laughs> then you feel something slimy brush against your leg underwater. What was that? But before you can think again, it grabs your foot and pulls you under. Quick, splash over to one, two, five. Ooh. Yeah, that's First triple right. digits. Are you getting spooked? Terrified. It's Zoe, isn't it? It's Zoe. The icy water fills your eyes, ears, and mouth. You gulp for air only to swallow water, cough, <laughs> and splutter. <coughs> Splash. <laughs> Thank you, sound effects. We love a Foley artist. <laughs> you thrash your arms, but it feels as if you're still sinking. In your panic, you let go of your stick. Your lungs begin to ache. You open your eyes and try to see what it is that has pulled you under. It's no good. All you can see is the blurry blue of water. That does water. sound pretty no good. Water water everywhere with one last burst water, of strength water, water. what do we have here <laughs> you shake off the thing that has you by the foot gasping for air you reach the surface you look back in terror and see zoe she's red faced and giggling zoe you shout you know i can't swim Sorry. Slimy bitch. <laughs> Sorry. She laughs. Can we jump back and talk about how it described her as slimy? Yeah. That's so funny. Ah, uh, sarcastic and slimy. She's your best friend, Zoe. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new opening to her sitcom. <laughs> Zoe 102. Yeah. My sister's name is Zoe and she's going to hate me if she hears this. <laughs> 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 No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she laughs, treading water. You looked so scared staring into the cave like that. I just couldn't resist giving you a little dunk. <laughs> I couldn't resist a quick drowning. <laughs> <laughs> right? Neither can I. I'm not scared, you protest. I was just wondering if we'll be able to find a way out. It's so dark in here. Just wondering, huh? Zoe teases. Want me to go first? You get to choose. Do you want Zoe to lead? Or do you want to go first? Zoe goes first. <laughs> <laughs> I Also, I reckon this is going to be fine because like, there was a breeze coming out of the cave. That means there's an ending at a point. Mm. It might not be big enough to get through, but like, there's, that's how caves work. That is, That do be how caves work. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just a hole in a wall. Yeah. So you're gonna let Zoe take the lead, and we're having heading heading, and we're heading over to page fifty-two. Easy. Not as easy as reading. <laughs> oh yeah, I ooh, look another another wee spoiler. Um, I'm gonna be coming back later this season, the very end of this season, <gasps> to be reading a book to you. Um, how do we tell the people I can't read? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've already done that earlier today where you were like, ah, yes, I know how to read because I went from page one to page two. Uh, yeah, but also I was trying to read something earlier and I nearly had a stroke. <laughs> I hate it when that happens. It's, look, it's kind of commonplace. You know there's no going back. Not with that gargoyle creature outside. 
This cave is your only hope. But still, it's so dark and spooky in there. You go first, Zoe, you say as you pull yourself up, out onto the rocks. You gesture towards the creepy cave with one hand. If you're so brave, then you just go right ahead. Okay, scaredy cat, follow me, she says as she steps into the mouth of the cave. You stay right behind her. You are both dripping wet and shrivering. Shrivering? Shrivering. But a warm breeze is blowing through the cave. It dries you as you go. Decided not to fix it. I didn't re say shivering correctly. I was just like, it's funny to be wrong. <laughs> That's my entire life. Mm. That's the game plan. There is a warm breeze blowing through the cave, though, and it is drying you as you would go. So and we're going to walk into a correct. volcano. That's how warm it is. Your eyes adjust to the darkness. Jagged rocks line the walls of the cave. You move slowly through the dark. So it's stalactites are thrown the ceiling. Stalagmites are thrown on the floor. What do we call them if they're on the side? Stalag rights and stalag lefts. <laughs> <laughs> That's way better than my job, which was going to be stalag bites, and I didn't have a reason. That was the first one I thought of that rhyme. Good. I was pretty happy with mine. It sounded oh. canned. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah, I planned that earlier. Yeah, you know. I, I thought you'd ask. Got my cave humor down. <laughs> Cave humor. Oh, what a great name. It is pretty good. Cave rocks. Uh. <laughs> Took his cave rock. <laughs> That's such a stupid joke I do all the time. <laughs> you move slowly through the dark. Zoe tells you when there's a boulder or a ditch. You <laughs> Boulder. Ditch. <laughs> ditch. Boulder. She does seem like a bit of a ditch. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> you're a bit of a boulder. <laughs> You walk for what seems like an eternity. Then you see something totally unexpected. Light! Look! You shout to Zoe. That must be the way out. Scramble to page 88. What do you think it's going to be? Home. Hotel. The pool. <laughs> ah, yes. It's your parents with torches. <laughs> They're going to save the day. You've done it. Zoe speeds over the rocks towards the bright light. You hurry to keep up. You can't wait to get out of this cave and meet up with your group. Even Mrs. Weedle is sounding pretty good to you right about now. But when you glance up, you see you have stumbled into some sort of large underground chamber. The light you saw was not from the sun. It was torchlight, cast by hundreds of blazing torches that decorate the room you now stand in. Oh cool. my goodness! Cool, Zoe <laughs> Oh, damn it! This is... This, we've jumped into a Dungeons to Dragons podcast. <laughs> oh, I yes. love this for us. This is a dragon. <laughs> Obviously a dungeon. Got him. What is this It's an place? ad. An ad for an ad. The cavern is so tall you can't even see the ceiling, but the floor is covered in soft carpets. At the end of the room, a small pyramid rises. It looks just like the ones we studied in ancient history class, you whisper, pointing to the pyramid. Yeah, but this isn't history. This is now. Check out that throne, Zoe says in amazement. At the top of the pyramid is a golden throne, draped with what appears to be tiger skins. Zoe walks over to it, gaping at the splendid throne. But you're starting to feel nervous. Somebody lit all these torches, and you're not so sure you want to be around when they get back. Too late. Uh-oh, Zoe whispers. Somebody's coming! <laughs> Who is it? Clue in on page 63. Clue in. Clue in. Hey, welcome to the clue in. <laughs> this is where clue does uh, take place. Someone's gonna get fucking murdered. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like that. Clue in. It's... I don't know. I, I've always wanted to do like a murder mystery dinner party. I really want to do one for my dad's 50th, but he wouldn't let me. And he's like, I just, I don't want so many people over at the house. Like, da, da, da. I was like, that's fine. Well, you can be the dead person. He's like, cool. That's not better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so, also, you know, it kind of is better being the dead person. Yeah. That's what I said. And he, just, he, he told me to stop. I was like, just that's fair stop. enough. Stop. From every corner of the room, from each crevice, dark forms step out of the shadows. They move in, circling around you. Some of them are shorter than you, some taller. And as they step into Small, the- Small, medium, and large! The two genders! 
<laughs> and as they step into the torchlight, you realise with a chill that pierces you to the bone, there's something very unhuman about them. The first thing you notice is their bizarre heads. They look like hideous puffballs. They're perfectly round and covered in slimy white fuzz, like moss. Their eyes are big, gelatinous blobs, glossy and white. You're almost too grossed out by their heads to notice, but their bodies are covered with heavy, grey, rock-like scales instead of skin. As if someone dipped them in glue and rolled them in a gravel pit. What a weird thing to compare that to. Like, oh, you know, this thing, it's just like this other ridiculous situation that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are they? Some forgotten race of cave people with big blobby eyes to help them see in the dark? Maybe that's what happens to you if you spend too much time underground, you think. They are moving in on you and Zoe. Your knees are starting to feel shaky as they draw nearer. Are they friends or enemies? Rush to page 91. I'm going to say they're friends. Well, like, you can I can only hope. I can only hope. Like, the theme of this book, like, you're in for a scare is kind of a goal. Um, but, you know... Do you want to make judge friends? a book by its cover. Yeah. Or by Which its we did. title or brand or anything else. <laughs> yeah. So we're heading over to page 91. Yeah. I'm getting so, like, I, I was already into this and I'm getting more into this. I'm like, I gotta live. <laughs> <laughs> what do these bizarre cave people want from you? You wonder as they come closer and closer. Look up there! Zoe yells. She points to the pyramid. All the creatures fall to their knees suddenly. A huge figure appears on the throne at the top of the pyramid. He must be ten feet tall. His face is covered with strange slimy moss, like the others, but it is gold coloured, not white. And huge horns stick out of each side of his big spongy head. He wears a robe of animal skins. I love him. Greetings, he booms. He speaks English. <laughs> is that a lot? Yep. Yo. The cave creatures draw towards you. Maybe they just want to say hello, on. like their king. <laughs> then again. You're gonna ignore me? No, I'm gonna you're ignore, ignore my you. very funny joke. Yep. Okay. Why are they surrounding you? If they are friendly. In a flash, you scan the cavern for an escape route. They are all around you. But off to your left, there seems to be a gap. If you make a break for it now, you just might get away from them. Or you could stay and hear what the big king has to say. Who knows? He could be nice. Possibly. It's your choice. I want to stay. I like him. So instead of making a run for it, you're going to hear the king out? Yeah, absolutely. Great, we're heading, we're heading to page 107. Nice. I thought I kicked you, but that's a pair of shoes in front of us. I am a pair of shoes. Oh. You decide to hear what the king has to say. Maybe the king will show us a way out, you whisper to Zoe. Humans! His voice booms through the cavern. Come forward. Two of the rock people grab you, one on each arm. Their hands are covered in stone chips. The stones dig into your skin. Ow! You exclaim. We'll throw the chips. Let us go! Zoe cries. The rock people drag you both up to the top of the pyramid. They throw you down at the king's feet. Maybe you should have run when you had the chance. Turn to page 135. Nah, it's going to be fine. They did this with the drowning. Try to scare you. Or it's not going to be fine. The king of the cave people peers down at you. All the features on his face are covered by soft golden fuzz. The thick horns stick out from the sides of his enormous round puffball head. He's so tall that you're getting a cramp in your neck from looking up at him. We live in this mountain. It is our home. You have trespassed here. He says as he lowers himself majestically to his throne. Zoe interrupts him. Excuse me, Mr. King, sir. I mean, your highness. I mean, whatever your name is. Her face is turning red. Yes? What is it, human? He asks impatiently. We're very sorry to have busted into your home like this. We really shouldn't be here. Zoe says, brushing her brown bangs out of her eyes like she always does when she's nervous. Fearlessly. <laughs> If you'd kindly show us how to get back out, we'd gladly leave. Ha! Ha! Very funny, bellows the king. 
all the cave creatures start snorting and chuckling. <laughs> Silence! The king bellows, cutting his subjects off. He leans forward and grabs Zoe by the arm. Find out what happens next it's on page 116. Ooh. Getting spooky, Lucy. It's, it's not great. No. It's I, not great. I haven't seen one shape of water fish person yet. Yeah, I don't... Maybe? I don't know. He's got big eyes. It's not the same, though. Like, he's not mossy. No, not at all. And he's not stony, but he's kind of like... I don't know. I'm sorry. It's the, <laughs> the taglines on the back is, it's really a jungle out there. Yep. We knew that going into it. That's what jungles are. Jungles. The king gazes into Zoe's face and bellows. If you want us to show you the way out, you're going to have to earn it. He lets go of her and she tumbles back to the ground next to you. I shall set you a task. If you can accomplish it in a certain amount of time, I will let you go free. If you cannot, the king shakes his horned head sadly. Your majesty, what will happen to us if we can't do it? You ask bravely. I will keep you here as my slaves forever! He roars. Rawr! <laughs> All the stone people snort and giggle as, they, as if their king just told the best joke ever. The king claps his stony hands three times. Bring forward the timepiece, he commands. Turn forward to page 120. Brings out a watch. Four servants hurry up the steps of the pyramid with a huge golden cage. Within the cage is an enormous hourglass. They place the timepiece in front of the king. The king points a stony finger at you and Zoe. You must bring me three pieces of gold from inside this mountain. His voice echoes through the cavern. You have one palooka to find the gold. One what? Zoe asks. One palooka, the king answers. It's our unit of time measurement here in the mountain. Pardon me, sir, you interject. But do you know what that breaks down to in human time. Do you know the, do you know the conversion rate there? Uh, hours and minutes maybe? You tap on your watch to show him what you're talking about. I don't know, the king snaps. Here, take my pocket timepiece. He hands you a beautiful Funny. little hourglass in a silver box. It's so small it fits right in your hand. That was a gift from my mother, the king says bowing his head. If you lose it, I will boil you in lava. He doesn't look like he's joking either. On the count of three, we flip the timepieces together. One, two. Quick, turn to page three. <laughs> Funny. Very good. Um, Lava, you were right about the volcano. Very excited about that. I feel like this, like, I've, I got Charlie, uh, you guys saw him in episode nine, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm, I got you. his, I, I read. <laughs> I'm kidding, I can't do that. I got his watch battery replaced, and I think he was just like that. He's like, if you lose my watch, <laughs> I will boil you in lava. <laughs> three! The king claps his hands three times again, and the servants flip the timepiece over. You do the same thing to the miniature timepiece in your hand. The sand pours through the glass. You tuck the baby hourglass into your shirt pocket. It fits perfectly. You have one palooka. Now bring me three pieces of gold, the king bellows. You glance around the chamber. There are tunnels everywhere. Come on, you shout at Zoe. Let's go. The two of you head for the biggest tunnel leading away from the chamber. You have one palooka to find the gold. Just how long is a palooka anyway, you wonder. Flip to page 58 to start your quest. I lo oh, we're doing a fetch quest? This is so exciting. <laughs> now the question is, I reckon I'm... I think I should just run away while this is happening. No. Oh. I don't think I'll get that option, but I feel like that's not a bad idea. But that sounds like there'll be consequences. You and Zoe race down the big tunnel. Where are we going to find gold? You wonder aloud to Zoe. I don't know, Zoe replies. It's not like your average scavenger hunt. Gold is pretty hard to come by. The tunnel was its weight in gold. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. The tunnel is wide and well lit by lanterns that hang. The tunnel is wide and well lit by lanterns that hang from the walls about every five feet. Smaller tunnels branch off to the sides of the main tunnel. Quick, let's take this one. Zoe chooses. She's pointing to a tunnel that curves downwards. There might be some gold deeper down towards the centre of the earth. 
Above you, you see a tunnel that goes straight up. There's a ladder cut into the stone. Do you want to take the tunnel that goes down, or do you want to take the ladder above you instead? Ooh. Let's go down. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. If, if, I, if I die going down, I, th I thought this is the point I'm going to come back to. Ooh. Yeah. We're turning to page 14. Maybe. If you can find it. Let's take the tunnel that goes down, you say. You pull the timepiece out of your pocket to check it. Hurry. We've only got about two-thirds of a palooka left. Oh my goodness. Quick palooka. <laughs> Even if we... That can't be right. Hang on, I'm just going to flip back to 58. Sorry, Liz replied to you and I realised there wasn't a Liz when we went into this tunnel. Want to take the tunnel that goes down, turn to page 14. Page 14. Let's take the tunnel that goes down, you say. You pull the timepiece out of your pocket to check it. Hurry, we've only got about two-thirds of a palooka left. Mm, mm. Even if we do get the golden time, do you think we'll make it back to the group before they take off? Liz asks. Maybe we're Liz. Definitely not. <laughs> Glancing at her clunky watch. It's already 2.30. We only have a half hour left. Let's worry about the gold first. If we get out of this mess, we'll meet up with Mrs. Weedle somehow, you remark. You follow Zoe down the stone tunnel. This one is not as well lit as the other. Ah, oh, Liz, short for Zoe. Yeah, Lizoe. Lizard! <laughs> of course! <laughs> that makes sense. As much sense as the rest of this. <sighs> that, that upset me. Yeah, that was a good few minutes of what's happening. Yeah, I was like, oh, maybe I turned to the wrong page. No, because the palooka. This one is not as well lit as the other. There is only one lantern about every 20 feet. Even though Zoe is right in front of you, Sometimes you bump into her because you can't see her. Ouch, Zoe complains. Walk further behind me. You don't have to walk on my heels. Sorry, you answer. I'll hang back a little. Get over it, Zoe. Or Liz. The tunnel twists. The two genders. <laughs> the tunnel <laughs> twists and turns. Zoe gets so far ahead of you that you feel as if you're alone. Your sneakers crunch on the loose rocks on the floor of the path. Doesn't sound very sneakery. The sound echoes down the passageway. You can hear your heart beating. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum 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 bum. Turn to page 33. In my head, that was going to be the, um, like, 21st century fox. Uh, <laughs> thing, but then I, yeah, yeah, but then yeah. I forgot how it went. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? I'm a bit of a uh, film buff. <laughs> you stumble along the darkly lit tunnel, listening to your heartbeat. How will you find three pieces of gold when it's so dark you can hardly see your hand in front of your face? Bum bum, bum bum, bum bum. Your heartbeat makes the only sound. I don't even hear Zoe's footsteps anymore, you think to yourself as you tramp through the passageway. Uh oh, Zoe did. That's when the tunnel ends. That's right, you walk smack into the rounded stone wall. You're in a small cave. Huge boulders block off the path forward. It's a dead end. Where did Zoe go? She was right in front of you. Your heartbeat speeds up. Bum, 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 bum. Where is she? Look for her on page 104. Where could Zoe have gone? The tunnel is a dead end. There's no way out and you were right behind her. Zoe, you call out. Zoe, where are you? Where are you? You, 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 you. Yo! Your voice <laughs> Your voice echoes back. That's when you notice the tip of a shoe sticking out from behind a boulder over to your left. It's a green shoe. The tip of it curves upwards. Like an elf's shoe. Who's there? You demand. Turn to page 26. Quick. The Wicked Witch of the East, bro. <laughs> she came down on a boulder and got crushed by a house. What was her sister? <laughs> Are you going to tell me that I'm wrong? Are you going to tell me that I'm was wrong by the way <laughs> and do you know what i didn't realize until like watching that for the 30th or 40th time the other guy pulls a fucking knife on him <laughs> he goes he, like the, the other guy just goes this is quite quietly can't really hear and he just goes i'm gonna stab him and he pulls out a fucking full of knife oh my god i imagine he didn't get stabbed but i was still you like know. the fuck and i showed it to the boys and they're like and i pointed out me like he pulls a knife and they're all like yeah it's like <laughs> you can't see around the boulder to see who it is that's wearing the weird little shoe but you're sure that whoever it is had something to do with the disappearance of your friend who's there you repeat 
just me, your friendly neighbourhood troll. A tiny man steps out from behind the rock. Funny. He carries a bright lantern that casts a flood of light into the tiny chamber. The troll is wearing a cute little mountain climber's outfit, complete Aww. with lederhosen and striped white and green stockings. <laughs> a white beard covers his wrinkled face. He would look like a tiny clown, but he has an evil expression on his face. Oh, boo. His mouth is set in a hard line, and his eyes, you realise with shock, are red. Where's my friend, you ask the troll. Well, that's no way to greet someone, the fellow snaps. He walks over to you. He comes up to your waist. My name is Cronby. What's yours? He extends his hand up to you. He leans towards you with his hand out, scowling. There's something wicked in those red eyes. Do you shake his hand? Or do you avoid his handshake? I avoid his handshake. It's unlike you. You're usually so polite. I, I'm just not very touchy. Also, <laughs> I reckon that's what happened to Zoe. She would have been like, I'm not afraid. I'm going to shake his hand and zap. She's in troll land. Do hate it when you end up in troll land. It's, yeah. It's a whole thing. Nice to meet you, Cronby, you say to the troll, bearing your hands in your pockets. Have you seen my friend Zoe? The troll wrinkles up his brow as if he's thinking very hard. Is she about this tall? He says, holding a hand up to exactly Zoe's height. With freckles and hair in her, in her face and uh, not very good manners. Yeah, That's you know. That's my bitch. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds like her. Yeah, Crombie says, sticking his hand in, hands in his pockets and imitating you. I saw which way she went. Where is she? You demand. The troll sits down on top of a small rock and crosses his legs. I'll tell you where she went if you tell me what you're doing down here. It's not often we see human kids down here, he says with curiosity. To make a long story short, you explain, we were chased inside the waterfall and we've got to find three pieces of gold for the king or be turned into slaves. Oh, you must be scared, he whispers. Oh, you must be scared. (laughs) No, I'm not scared at all, you say with confidence. Not scared at all, eh? Crombie says, his red eyes glimmering. Well, you're in luck. Look what I have here. Flip to page 71 to see what he's got. Be gold, be gold. Be Zoe, be Zoe. In his hat, he's actually very, very giant and big and he's holding (laughs) Zoe. In Crombie's tiny fist are two little nuggets of glimmering gold. Wow, if you could get them from the troll, you'd be more than halfway home. I'll play you for the gold, Cronby bargains. Play what? Well, since you're not scared of anything, I'll ask you a question about something really scary. If you get the question right, you get the gold and I'll show you where your friend is. So he does know about Zoe. What if I get the question wrong, you ask? Well, then I get to keep the gold and your friend. (laughs) The troll has an evil glint in his eyes. You see, I like to eat human beings. They're so chewy. (laughs) That is my number one virtue. (laughs) I was going to say quality, but I really think virtue describes it better. (laughs) You see, if you lose, you have to help me carry Zoe to my kitchen. She's too heavy for me. Funny. She's too heavy for me to carry all by myself. (laughs) He giggles in anticipation. No way, you shout. You'd never bet on your best friend's life. But I'm afraid you have no choice, the troll whispers. How will you save her? You don't even know where she is. Crombie throws his head back and laughs. The troll is right. You must play. Go to page 15 to decide your fate and Zoe's. Oh... I mean, this is where I'd have to use my extra choice. If you get it wrong, I can just be like, well, we use the right answer. <laughs> or it's one of those tricks where it's both answers are wrong. Hmm, Crumby says, leaning up against the boulder. Let me think. Don't think for too long, you tell him, pulling the hourglass out of your pocket. I've only got a third of a palooka left. Okay, if you're so brave, the troll says, then you must read a lot of scary books. Have you heard of R.L. Stein? <laughs> yes. Of course, you shout. Your voice echoes down the hallway. You're a Goosebumps expert, right? You're going to ace this question. 
Toro, I might need your help because you know a bit more about goosebumps than me. In the book Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, a vicious animal scares the lawn gnomes away. Is it a bat or a dog? Easy, you think to yourself. Was it a bat or was it a dog? Do you know the answer to this, Troy? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that I do. Uh, what book was it? Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes. Okay, Google. <laughs> oh, in Revenge of the Lawn Gnomes, what animal is there? <laughs> On the website books.google.com, they say, Two pink flamingos, a whole family of plaster skunks. Joe Burton's dad loves tacky lawn ornaments, but when he brings home two ugly lawn gnomes, the trouble begins. <laughs> to find out more, look for the link in your Google Home or Google Assistant app. That didn't give me the answer. That didn't give you the answer. <laughs> this episode features uh, Google. <laughs> By the way, the second I sat down, I was like, I'm using Google. <laughs> Good. Also, I refer to Google as Google because I'll still listen to you. Uh, I, I am like 80% sure it's a dog. Let's do dog then. I'm going to trust you. Phone a friend. My phone two friends. <laughs> you and Google. It was a dog. Joe and Mindy's dog. Buster, you say with confidence. You watch as the troll's face turns scarlet. His skin almost matches the fiery colour of his eyes. No, no, no! He screams. You mean I got it wrong? You gasp. No, you got it right. Yes. I made the question too easy. Excellent, you did it. No, no, no. Crombe screeches, throwing his body on the ground and hammering it with his tiny fists. I haven't had a meal in 20 years, the troll moans. That's your problem. <laughs> that sounds like a you problem. Yeah. I won Fine. fair and square, you declare. Now show that was me a good run. It was. Now show me where Zoe is and give me my gold. Why don't you give me one last chance? We could bet for another piece of gold, he wheedles. Like the person showing us on the tour? Exactly the same spelling, yes. Funny. <laughs> that way, you would have all three and you could go free. Again, rhyming. I love this. You hesitate. I don't know. Come on, it'll be fun, he pleads. I'll ask you another R.L. Stein question. Yes. After all, time is running out. It's a hard call, but you've got to make a decision. Do you bet for the third piece of gold? Do you grab Zoe and the two pieces of gold and get away from the troll? I'm going to bet for the third piece of gold. Yeah? Oh, uh, love a gamble. And plus, I will just Google it again. <laughs> so we're going for the third bit of gold. One, one, four. Okay, you announce. I accept your challenge. Good, Crombie says. If you get it right, I'll give you three pieces of gold and you and Zoe will go free. If you lose, though, he rubs his hands together greedily, I get to keep both of you. Gulp. What's the question you ask in your head? You're trying to remember every Goosebumps book you've ever read. None. <laughs> exactly. Hmm. In a book called The Cuckoo Clock of Doom, there's a boy who has a little sister who's a real pain. Is her name Tara the Terrible or Tanya the Terror? That question is harder, but you think you know the answer. Was the sister's name Tara the Terrible or Tanya the Terror? Okay, Gugu. <laughs> In R.L. Stein's what was it? The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. Who is the sister? According to Google Books, deciding to get even with his bratty little sister, who always gets him in trouble, Michael Webster fiddles with their father's antique clock, planning to blame Tara, and accidentally sets time backwards. TV tie-in, adapted by Carol Ellis from the teleplay by Billy Brown. Thank you, Daniel, Google. Based on the novel by R.L. Stein. So, Tara. So you think her name was Tara the Terrible? Sure do. Wow. <laughs> Guessing. Is this cheating? Yes. Some but... It's really funny. It is kind of funny that you're making use of the OK Google. I Damn it. Didn't, I didn't even, I didn't have a cell phone with me. I didn't have anything. I just got my voice and your voice. Yep, yep. That's what a podcast is. So we're turning to page 74. Mm -hmm. The little sister is named Tara the Terrible, you declare with pride. Ah! The troll jumps up and down. I can't believe it. You got it right again. You jump into the I can't the believe air. it either. Hand over my gold, you command, Crombie. With tears in his eyes, Crombie withdraws three fat nuggets of gold from the pocket of his little pants and hands them over to you. Now show me where Zoe is, you direct. You check the timepiece. You still have about a fifth of a palooka left. 
You follow him to the mouth of the tunnel where Zoe is sitting, all tied up. Crombie unties her and scurries away. I got our gold, you exclaim. Oh, all right. She gives you a high five. How did you do it? You tell her the whole story on your way to the pyramid. You and Zoe reach the grand chamber as the last few grains of sand are about to fall through the hourglass. We've got the gold, you shout triumphantly. The king himself shows you out of the jungle. You safely meet up with the Junior Explorer Adventure Club. And what an adventure it was. The end. Yes! <laughs> I did it! You did? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> That's the first time anyone's gone through that dying at all. Yep. Yes! You absolutely did it. You Yay! 100% just beat the book without dying once. <laughs> Thank you, Gugu! <laughs> Wow, I didn't expect R.L. Stein questions to come up. I didn't expect you to be able to answer them, having not read an R.L. Stein book. It was teamwork. You helped me with the dog. It's and true. That's, look, that's why we're friends. <laughs> I've got it. Get. When you produce together, you've got to... Those who produce together, answer sleuth quest- together. Sleuth together is a good one. <laughs> I only thought it was reproduce together, and I'm like, that's not the thing that I'm saying. I don't I don't think we have. Do we, do we have children? Yeah, the name is From Top to Bottom in Season Quest. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Tom and Charlie. The, them two. Yeah. What an incredible opening to the second season of Pick a Path <laughs> Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. That was a riot. <laughs> it was. Usually I would jump into a second life, and we can still do that at another point if you would like to. One day I reckon we're going to have to jump back and see what happens if, I don't know, we either go fight them with the sticks, or if we, if I lead the way in the cave, you know... Exactly. We'll, we'll have a look, sir. Unfortunately, I am going to have to cut our episode off here. So again, <laughs> Lucy, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, love to have, love to be here. And as some sort of prize slash consolation, we will definitely be getting you back at the end of this season to run one of these books yourself. Oh, 100%. I'm so excited. Again, thank you again for coming. And have a spooky evening. <laughs> will do. You can also listen to us on Season Quest Podcast. Right now we are in, I believe, our final season Ooh. for this, this run. I'm trying to remember when this comes up. If you want, you can go listen to that. And yeah, Season Quest Pod, you can find us in places. That's right. <laughs> season Quest Pod is also created by Split Television Productions and is available on Spotify, YouTube, and everywhere that podcasts are found. It should be right next to this one and you're recommended. Have you not been listening to it? do so. How dare you? How dare you not be listening? (laughs) Thank you again. This has been Lucy Jones in Deep in the Jungle of Doom. See you.